One day till Teamless Tuesday. I'm so excited, guys. And we're here today to go through the People Squad. We've got all of the thoughts there put together from the guys in the Discord group there. And, you know, Scoop is in charge of that, so big thanks and a shout out to him there. How we've worked this out, guys, we're deciding what type of strategy we're going to go with in this section one. So the first part there is, uh, is there going to be a gun hooker or not? There's a tick for that. We've got the gun middles. We want a couple of them. No keeper edges. So this is the way we're going to play it. And I've got a short list of all the guys uh, based on the amount they've been selected. You see Grant here for number one has 82 selections in that hooking position. Obviously, Brandon Smith as well, nice and high at the 71, and Tanner Boyd there at 67. So that's big numbers for a lot of these positions, guys. You see Murray Haas at 51 and 53, for example, Carrigan at 73. So they're a couple of the big ones, and then we go down from there. But this was a, a video that did really well last year, this style, guys, where I just built a team from scratch. And you see that you obviously want a lot of different players in your team, you cannot fit them all. So this type of video is great to be able to potentially show where you want to lose a bit of cash. You know, if you can't fit someone in, you obviously got 10 mil in the salary cap, you can't fit everyone in. So a great you know, little insight into my thoughts on how to, to build a, a certain side there. And obviously we're gonna start in that hooking position, but Harry Grant's gonna be our most important guy. So we're gonna select him up top and then we're going to add guys like Brandon Smith and also Tanner Boyd in that one as well. So bear with me as we do this on the run. And we're going to go through lots of, of my chat in between to, to cover all the different positions and the types of guys that we're looking at bringing in into our side. So that hooking position, yeah, that makes a lot of sense, guys. When you're looking at guys like Brandon, you're looking at uh, Harry, obviously covers you know that gun position in a hooking role there. What are you looking at guys? Obviously that's the only position that we have one player. So very, very important. I think personally that you get a good score out of your hooking position, unless there's a lot of value. So guys like Brandon Smith, we know he can score in a, you know, a gun range there. That's sort of anywhere between high forties to, to 60. And that's exactly what we're looking for in that position at a minimum. If, you, if you're only gonna cop like a 40 from this position, I think you're really missing out. You know, because yes, you are spending potentially a little bit more money elsewhere, but in a position that there's a limited amount of good players, I think it's important to at least have one really good scorer. And then you could potentially have a cheaper kind of guy to cover the, you know, the, to be back up and score okay. And probably he's a player in your 17 or, or close to it. Uh, and at worst he's, you know, because really the, the worst thing you could do here is have an injury to Harry and you have only have cover uh, on the bench who is someone who isn't going to be a great scorer. Just say you didn't have Harry there, you just had Brandon Smith. In that buy in round four, at a minimum, you're going to have to play someone else in that hooking position. If you've got Tanner Boyd, for example, in the halves position, if potentially he has been dropped, there's a lot of different things you need to think about, then you need to have someone that can cover that position or you're gonna to have to trade. And the last thing you wanna do is to trade for one week when someone has a, a suspension, someone has a buy, or someone has a one week niggle injury. Uh, they move to the bench or, they, or they're or they out of the team completely. So this there, having those three guys, Tanner will move on to the bench and he can be our third cover. And great that he can also cover the half position and Brandon Smith can cover that middle position as well. Okay, the next thing we said guys was we wanted the mid position and that was gonna be two guns. So the way we could play this is we could have Brandon Smith and then two gun middles. And the two that were high, most highly selected was Murray and was Carrigan. You saw Murray and Haas were very, very close in terms of their selection. So if we do have to save a little bit of cash later down the track, then we will go from Murray down to Haas there. But we're gonna start with Cam, because he's gonna be obviously, you know, one of the great scorers in in our game this year. And yeah, he's gonna do it, he's gonna do a great job, really. You know, you're looking at someone who's gonna be scoring that mid sixties, uh, mid to low sixties, pretty comfortably all the way up to round 13. So I think he's a great selection there. And then Carrigan looks like he has a little bit of value uh, in in his side and in you know in in our side in the people's squad. So if you're looking up top there, that's a super strong hooker and middle coverage. And we'll see that we do have a couple of cheaper guys in there as well. So the top four guys in terms of the guns were Carrigan, Murray, then Haas, and Tarpane. So Tarpane was in the 25. So for you know, with him, we're looking at if we need that extra 15k, then we'll go from Haas down to to Tarpany, but at this point, we don't need that. And then the couple of cheap guys that we could pop in for now was Mr. Jackson Ford, which had, he had a lot of votes there. 
Again, we're going to pop all these guys in and see what happens, team. So, Mr. Ford, and we had Ben Murdoch, who was our other solid option there as well. So, there's a good good chance that that Bird takes this edge spot in round two. Um, and if he does, that's obviously a worry for, for Murdoch Masilla's minutes there because there's a big chance that he ends up on the bench. But Birdie could also play six. He could also play 13 with JDB in the eight or 10 position. So... Murdoch Masilla at this point, let's place him in that side until Team List Tuesday. And the big reason for doing this today, guys, is it's very, very hectic uh, post Team List Tuesday. And the last thing we want is to be thinking about really making a, a mass, you know, massive changes in this people's squad. So we'll have the majority of our team set and then we can just make a couple of small changes from there. Okay, if we're looking at our edge position, again, we're going to have to probably have to change a bunch of this as we go. But obviously, guys, like Hopgood is going to be our first must-have. We had Hopgood as number one. We then had Eli Katoa was number two. So we'll get him in there as well. He's uh, obviously coming over at a, a very you know, cheapish price there. And the next one was, we had Hosking in there, was an important one, and Liero. So let's go for both those guys, all of those guys to kick it off, those four, and Hosking or Ghana. Ghana didn't have a lot of selections, so maybe we just fade that one altogether. But Trent was the third most picked. And you'll see here, guys, we have a lot of middles and edges coverage at the moment. So we'll see how that shakes out. But at the moment, we have all of those guys. We have Hosking, and then we're looking at also Dury and Bloor. Guys like Wilton, they weren't in uh, of, of highest priority at this point, which is completely fair. Just a little bit more expensive. I can understand why you'd be looking to avoid them as well. And guys, just with this uh, being three days left until round one, if you are looking to enter the private group, guys, and you want to be eligible for those prizes in round one, you do need to get in there before the first game starts on the Thursday. You need to be in that league because about half the prizes uh, will be in play for people that are in that league starting in round one. There are going to be lots of prizes each, every second week along the way, starting with a nice cash prize of hundred bucks and a JB hoodie, which is unreleased yet. Um, yeah, so get in there if you can and uh, ask any questions if you need. But yeah, we obviously got three days to go until that round one, and that's when you want to be in there. We got a live on Thursday night as well. We also have a live straight after Team List that evening. So plenty of lives each and every week and lots of deep dives into that as well to go along with those prizes. So uh, that would be awesome if you could look to, to try and jump in that. Uh, there's you know, a decent amount of people in now and all having a great time. So Shawnee Bloor makes it in there as well. Beautiful. All right, let's move to the halves now. So we've got Cleary just over Heinze is the selection. So that could change at any point as well. But with Cleary being the slightly cheaper guy, we're going to start with him. Uh, and Tanner will probably move to the bench as we said. So Cleary just over Heinz. And we had Dewey was the next best picked. And then Brooks. Brooks. Very interesting, wasn't it? So Adam Dewey to start off with. Again, if we need to drop any of these guys, then... Dewey might be the man, because it looks like at this point, we're probably going to be captaining Cleary. But we'll ask the team. We'll, uh, we'll work that out once we, we get the squad going. So we'll move Tanner Boyd to Dewey just to make that look a little bit nicer. We'll move Dewey to Boyd as well, which will be good. Okay, that makes that a little bit nicer. And then we can move someone like Hosking. So he's going to be starting, obviously, if he gets that spot. Him or Ghana, so he can slot in there as well with Hopgood. Awesome. Alrighty. So there's those guys there. And we didn't have any other cheap half at the moment, but someone like uh, Katoa, Isaiah Katoa there from the from the Dolphins. He could be a sneaky one as well. So we'll keep him, keep him in there, but we have a lot of cheapies to pop in in our centers and below. So let's move to the centers now. And our cheap centers was the way that was going to play. And this meant for Thompson and also Alamotti. So Pretty stock standard centers at the moment. A lot of people looking for these guys to do well. And we will have a little bit of cover as well. So Thompson goes in, which looks good. How are we looking? We've got 2 million in the bank there, which is nice. Uh, one second, Alamotte. Beautiful. All right, he goes in there as well. And then other options, we had Talao, Smith Shields, and Stag. So if we return, to, there was a, a small chance very very small chance that we go for a keeper center so we'll avoid that for now and we'll pop in talau as well again we're probably running out of a little bit of players yeah so one two more on the bench there mr talau which will be good all right t-a-l good spelling guys um yeah how's it have you enjoyed the preseason guys i hope you've really enjoyed it i've had an absolute crack of time 
I'm about to release the schedule of my videos over the next few days as well. Um, this week will be different just because it's round one and we've done a lot of the prep work, but from round two onwards, it's gonna be a bit of a schedule week to week, guys. So um, get excited with that. Uh, I know I certainly am. Okay, we said maybe a keeper wing fullback, but not likely. We had in order of votes, Miller, Warbrick, Tamati Martin, Drinky, and To'o. So let's start with Miller. We're gonna have to go down to the wing fullbacks now. Um, yeah, Miller, very interesting one. So let's pop him in there. One second. Let's get that wing fullback. Let's see a slow on the older internet sometimes. All right, Miller is in. We get Warbrick in. And then we will get to Muddy Martin in. And that leaves us with not too much cash, to be honest with you. But if you're looking at the team straight up, it looks pretty strong, right? You're looking up top with Grant, Smith, Murray there. Carrigan, which is nice. Dewey and Cleary. Cleary most likely as the skipper of this side, which is going to be nice. All right, let's get to Muddy Martin. TE. All right, so 865 left for three players. Uh, what's that? Two players. Okay, we might be able to, might be able to upgrade a little bit here. Tip Marty. All right. Awesome, awesome, awesome. All right, that one spot. Look, we were thinking of maybe going for a gun. How's that going to work? We won't have enough for, for drinky, will we? All right, this will be interesting. I might just slot. Let's go. How much is Scotty drink water? The other thing to think about with the Cowboys, guys, is it does look like they have a slightly you know easier draw but how much easier is it that is the question that we have to ask ourselves let's go here if we went for drinky's not going to go if we went murray to what was the other one so it's dewey down to brooks or murray down to haas if we do murray down to haas let's go with that but again you guys watching this the discord crew jump in check this one out and let me know your thoughts and then i don't think that allows us to get drinky does it Paint Haas down. It might be To'o is the other option. So we can just plug in To'o to start with, guys. And then we can go from there. So 647 for our final player. If we chuck in To'o, and then we can have a bit of a discussion on, on the types of players that we've got in our side and, and sort of our balance and everything as well. And uh, I really hope this, this video helps, guys. Yeah, last year we did one. It was about half an hour. It said how to build a team in half an hour. And that was plenty of fun. And yeah, got plenty of traction and got a lot of good feedback. So uh, I hope this really helps you guys and just how you look at a side where you would take away some cash and where you would try and fit guys back in your side. So even just there with Payne Haas coming down, we have 90K in the bank, which again, we'll probably have to change a couple of things heading into this first uh, round effort here after team list. But this gives us a solid base and we can make some changes around there. So Toto's in there, he's gonna be moving to the left side and uh, yeah, very, very interesting. So let's kick this off from the, from the, from the jump. If we look just straight at our bench, we've got Ben Medoc Masilla there. Who would we switch him for? He'd be happy with Leoro, Ford, and Tanner. That's completely fine in terms of the bench there. Blory, if he gets a start, then we're going to probably play him if Ben, yeah, ben Medoc Masilla is going to be out. So he's not even going to be in that position anyway. Blory, we're happy to be for him to be in there. Matt Dury as well, if he gets to start, he's going to be a solo one. Tomate, you know, could you play him over a guy like Warbrick, potentially? Definitely. Could you play Talao over Alamotti, potentially? Uh, depending on how you think the Tigers are going to go. Depends how you think the Doggies are going to go first game there. Um, but overall here, you look at that, you, know, you go back into the main squad. Let's think about buyers to kick things off there. So you've got Harry Grant and buy in round nine. That's sweet. So you've got to cover Smithy in round four. So in terms of mids cover, we are going to be fine. You look at someone like Hopgood can move into that spot. You've got Leoro, you've got Bloor, you've got Ford, um, and Ben Medoc Masilla if he's playing. All of, and Dury, all of these guys can slot into edges. We can move Hopgood up into that position. Awesome. Hosking, he has a buy in round three. Can we cover that? Yes, we just said we've got plenty of edges to cover that position. Payne, Haston, Carrigan, we don't have to worry about them until uh, round 13 when they're both going to be off on origin duty. Is there a chance that we move on at least one of them from this time so we're not sitting there with multiple guys in the mids from uh, an origin team? I think we're going to move them on. I think that's going to be fine. But that's a long way away. So if you can get 12 rounds out of these guys, I think that's great. Hopgood, definitely three really, really good rounds, but I still think he's going to be a gun in this side. Uh, being able to average 50 plus over the first bunch of weeks and then maybe in the 40s, depending on minutes and stuff like that, or how important he is to this side. 
Adam Dewey and Cleary. So Cleary, again, we have now three guys on our side that are going to be out in round three, guys. So just be aware of that. Um, if you're looking at this, we've got Hosking, Cleary, and also To'o. So To'o might be the guy that we do change just based on that fact. But if you're looking at coverage uh, across the half position, we have Tanner Boyd, which we spoke about. We could end up putting Katoa in as well if we want to remove one of these guys or we want to go to Marty Martin to Katoa, bring a little bit of cash back into the side and then go from Haas up to Murray and... Yeah, or we get drink water, for example, could be the other way we go about that one, who we're very close to being able to get him with that 90k. We need about 15 or 20 more. So that's that. Haas could go down to Tarpany and we could go to all up to Drinky. That would fit just, I think, as well. Uh, so they're good options there as well. But in terms of that, clearly you can go to Tanner Boyd, who has a buy in round five. Something to think about as well. Um, do we find there? Thompson, we just need to be aware that he could potentially lose his spot in round two so yeah will he be able to hold that if he can great he should be able to score pretty well if he can't we then have tommy to allow that will slot into that center position all right and then we wouldn't have any cover from there and have thompson sitting there uh on the bench which would be annoying so alamotti is he a chance of getting dropped small chance you know not locked in but if he plays solidly he's not going to get dropped if he plays really bad you probably don't want him in your side anyway uh, in, in terms of your fantasy side and then the wing fullbacks there, we've got, oh, can we cover him? Yes, we have Tommy Talau and we have Tamati Martin. So that's completely fine. Those two guys can come in. Warbrick, probably looking like three rounds. So if we can get him at least for that round three buy, depending on if we have To'o or not, round three. Round three game when To'o has a buy, I think that'll be very, very helpful. Um, so really guys, that's just a, a pretty solid side. If you look at that from straight up there, yeah, there's not really many holes. We've got plenty of value guys in the edges. You've got plenty of scoring up front in the mids. There's no hole in hooking position. There's no hole in the half position. We've gone light-ish in the centers. Uh, it's pretty solid in the wing fullbacks. You've got two guys over 400K, one over, over 500 and one cheapy. And then the bench is probably a little bit light. So we've spent up a little bit more in the wing fullback position with To'o. We've spent up in the hooking and a little bit in the mids. Definitely spent up in the halves apart from getting... Hines and Cleary. And really, we're just hoping for a bunch of these guys off the bench. You know, really, this strategy is going to be great if you think there's going to be a, a, a cheapy or two at the 230, 260 range that is going to be able to come in and start in a you know one of these teams and get decent minutes and score close to a 30 or 40 every week. And if you can do that, then I think that it's a really good strategy to spend up in other positions there. So generally, that's the uh, the making of the people squad, guys. It actually was a lot quicker. Thanks you to everyone who put their votes into the Discord. If you haven't joined the Discord, guys, get down in the description below. That's where the private group uh, description and also the, uh, the the link is as well. Uh, so hope you enjoyed this video, guys. Hope you, you know, taught you how to, to build a team in terms of having coverage and stuff like that. And the best thing there is with Ben Murdoch Masilla is that if you have him in your side, you can use him as a looping option. And just to, to talk through looping just quickly, guys, with the Dragons, they're going to be playing a little bit later in the week. So that is good. Really, the later you can have those guys playing, the better there. So how it's going to work is, you know, one of these guys that play earlier on in the week, for example, with these mids, yeah, you have guys like Payne Hass and Carrigan who can be put on the bench here. Okay, what you do is you have them on the number five spot which is going to be great. Number four, it doesn't really matter there. How it's going to work for them, if you have Ben Murdoch Masil on the starting side, if he doesn't play, or you know, what you want here is the mid to be in the first position there that you want definitely playing, um, and then you can have a free swipe at one of these other guys in the, in the five position, sorry, is how you want to play that with a guy that you're not too sure on. So it might be Jackson Ford there. Um, who you're not exactly sure on. Again, you have to work this out and even have a look at this yet as, as to how you would set this up. Jackson Ford, he plays in an early game, which is great. So what you want to do is pop him in number five, sorry. And Med Ben Murdoch Masilla can come into the interchange or into the starting side. All right, if he's in the starting side there and he you know, Ford comes out and does really, really well, all you have to do is obviously leave him because he cannot move and leave Ben Murdoch Masilla in that starting side. What then happens is that first mid that's on this interchange bench goes into the starting side. So if that's Murdoch Masilla at number five, or sorry, if that's Jackson Ford at number five, he would then come straight into that starting side and play for you. 
if you don't want to take Jackson Ford's score, if he scores under 30, if you don't really like it, all you have to do is move one of these other these other mids, yeah, whether it be Brandon Smith, Haas, Carrigan, into that starting side, and then you will remove Ben Meadow Priscilla and pop him down a little bit lower. So it's just a free swipe, guys, at getting a decent scorer. That's the basic way to do it. If you have two players out, there's other different ways of looping as well. But again, we'll get into that a little bit later. We won't need that in the first round, but it might come up in round two, three, or four. Um, and there's a lot of guys that are really smart in that, but we'll end up doing a, yeah, a small section on clearly showing that. Uh, but in this one, just was just a little, little tester. All you have to do is look at who's playing early in the week, guys. And obviously Jackson Ford does, which is good. Trent Liero does these types of plays, but you want them to be the same position as your guy here that's not playing. That's the easiest way to do it because you can get that. Uh, and secondly, you can just do it on the bench here. Uh, when she goes into four position, you have a guy you're not you're not too sure on. Trent Liero, for example, Sean Bloor, you're not exactly sure on. If they play early in the week, like Trent Liero, you can do it clearly. Same with Jackson Ford. Pop them in that's number five position and then you can go from there. But that's just a general strategy, guys. If you have any questions about it, just ask in uh, the comments, uh, but better better ask in the uh, in the Discord group. There's a bunch of guys to be able to help you there. And we do have uh, Phil's looping strategy, um, how to loop in the Discord as well, guys. So thank you very much for that. I'll catch you in the next one.